Perhaps it began as a magic ritual performed by ancient priests or a religious dance at a sporting event. No one knows for certain, but over the centuries it has evolved into an art form that has amazed and delighted millions. Today it's an art practice throughout the world, the art we call juggling. laws of physics was first discovered about 300 years ago by this man. He was Sir Isaac Newton. Legend has it that Newton was sitting under a tree one day and an apple hit him on top of the head. Well, that didn't upset Sir Isaac. In fact, he was overjoyed. A flash of great inspiration just come into his mind. What Newton discovered that day was the law of gravity. In other words, what goes up must come down. Of course, Sir Isaac's law is still true today, but that hasn't kept a lot of people from trying to prove otherwise. Even minds, like my partner Lorena and I, have been trying to convince our audience for years that gravity plays tricks on us. difference between illusion and reality. Pretending to defy gravity and really doing it. That's where juggling comes in. No one knows where or when juggling actually began. But the earliest record dates all the way back to ancient Egypt. 4,000 years ago, these images of women jugglers were recorded on the walls of a tomb. They display the basic styles of juggling that remain unchanged to this day. Whatever its mystical roots, through the ages, juggling has kept a special fascination. Juggling became so popular during the Renaissance that it was a common skill among entertainers. But it wasn't until the 19th century that juggling came into its own. The Chinese had already developed it into a specialized art form. These oriental jugglers had a profound influence on European performers. There was a great explosion of new ideas, props, and routines. The novelty acts of the 1800s, with their many costumes and gimmicks, 
soon gave way to a greater emphasis on technical skill and perfection. The greatest of these technical jugglers was Enrico Rustelli. Though Rustelli's individual tricks have been duplicated by others, no one juggler has ever equaled his incredible range. Perhaps no one ever will. A little later in the century, a new style emerged, one that emphasized control, grace, and precision. Its most memorable practitioner was Bobby May. Bobby May elevated this style of cabaret juggling to a high art. Vaudeville provided a stage for a different breed of jugglers, the comics. One of them was Homer Stack. Today in his 90s, Homer is probably the oldest living vaudevillian juggler. Retired from the stage, he has become a teacher sharing his expertise with a new generation of jugglers. Now put one in there. Now, now put one in there. Now put that one in the other way. See? The other way. Now throw the other one. Beautiful. One, two, a juggling takes three things. It takes timing, it one, takes muscular control, control, and it takes concentration. Control. Now, when I start people off juggling, I tell them, I want you to juggle just 20 minutes a day. 20 minutes. But seven days a week. And any juggler that is good, that is a good juggler, has practiced that way. I think the greatest juggler today is Francis Brunn. Francis Brunn specialized in balancing and juggling a lot of things at the same time, which is a very difficult type of juggling. To do an act and do it properly, you must have that act down so you do it automatically. So you don't have to think what you're going to do. Because if you have to think what you're going to do, you have to hesitate, and then you miss. Lottie Brunn certainly performs her act without hesitation. Her incredible skill has led her to be the only woman ever to perform solo in center ring. Technical perfection like this doesn't just happen. It takes years of practice and dedication. I never felt that I could do a straight act. I never felt that I that I had the, the appearance or the personality to do a straight act. And I always did comedy. We'd take W.C. Fields. Now, W.C. Fields, I think, was a funny-looking man to start with. And W.C. Fields could never do a straight act, no matter how good he was, see? But he was marvelous doing a comedy act because it fitted his personality and it fitted with what he was doing. Few people realize that in the early 1900s, long before his first screen appearance, W.C. Fields was known internationally as the world's greatest juggler. These scenes are from a 1934 production, The Old Fashioned Way. Robert Nelson has a 
adapted many of Field's techniques to his own stage character, the Butterfly Man. Wait, wait, wait. Try it again. who go for the oohs and the ahs rather than the laughs have had plenty of inspiration too. The fabulous Bobby May. No other juggler has ever matched his precision of fluid style. Oh. 
40-year career, Bobby May performed in over 35 countries and became known as the International Juggler. But Bobby May was more than a juggler. He was always ready to share his skills and knowledge with others. Now that he's gone, his former students are a living legacy. One of the most gifted is the world champion juggler, Dick Franco. Bobby May, he was the, uh, I would think, the best of the American ball jugglers. Now these days, you've got some young guys coming up who are phenomenal with uh, balls. But as far as uh, performing jugglers who were on the stage at that time, Bobby May was far, far ahead of everybody. The technical skill that he did, um, the five ball routine that he did has never been repeated even until mm -hmm. now. He introduced the, uh, the off-tempo juggling where it's uh, very eccentric, where the, where the shoulders are lifted and the arms are stretched out. He'd throw a right throw, a right throw, and then the ball would shoot across to the left and he'd catch it at the last second. But with ball juggling, Bobby May helped me a great deal with the tricks that he called from ear to ear. It's very difficult to do because you have to balance the ball at every point. He taught me a lot of ways you can get a little more advantage over the ball. In show business, as long as show business has been show business, uh, the majority of the artists are very possessive with their knowledge, with their skills, with, with their ideas, with their secrets, and a lot of secrets, uh, especially with jugglers. And um, when I met Bobby May, I didn't find this true at all. He opened up to me and he gave me everything he possibly could give me. I think really the biggest influence that uh, Bobby May had on my professional career was not so much in the teaching me technical ability or teaching me tricks. It was more, um, he taught me style and mental attitude, and more than anything else, he gave me uh, confidence. Although Franco has certainly mastered traditional juggling techniques, he is always experimenting with new props and routines. I really like the juggle that ping pong ball. It's a, it's a nice change. People like it a lot more than regular juggling because you do it with your mouth. Now I'm juggling up in the air, but there's a lot of other ways you can juggle ping pong balls as well. Juggle this way. In the Bobby May tradition, Franco has been helping Anthony Gatto polish his act. Anthony is only nine years old, but he is already a world-class juggler. Here is Mr. Owen. Like Franco, Anthony enjoys experimenting with new and unusual props. There's a ball in his head. comes out the mouth. As a basic boy, he's a very brilliant boy. As far as juggling goes, uh, strictly phenomenal. Uh, when I practice with Anthony or when I juggle with Anthony, it's just like I'm juggling with my equal. We connect very, very well. skill and proficiency at such a young age have amazed audiences around the world. In a way, the spirit of Bobby May lives on, still thrilling and entertaining audiences. In the past few years, juggling has moved far beyond the circuses, cabarets, and nightclubs. 
Leading this movement is a growing band of enthusiasts called the International Jugglers Association. Every year, hundreds of members gather in a selected town or city, bringing new routines and plenty of props. They transform main streets, shopping malls, and parking lots into stages, breaking down the traditional barriers between the entertainer and the audience. the jugglers in the old days who jealously guarded their secrets. The International Jugglers Association is dedicated to teaching anyone who wants to learn. I can teach the average kid to juggle in 15 to 20 minutes, and we do this in gym classes with scarves, with island scarves. And the scarves are, are pretty easy uh, because they fall in half the speed of gravity. We find that the kids really get off on it. They love it. You know, it's a lot of fun. Take the third. Now we'll do it a little faster. You take this one, and that one, and this one, and keep juggling. You'll see, by the end of the hour, basically every kid here will know how to juggle. Hey, you're getting pretty good at that. Thank you. So are you. You know, it seems like so many people are learning how to juggle. I bet America has more jugglers than anywhere else. Nope. Nope? What do you mean, nope? That's not true. That's not true. Mm -mm. I know a place where half the population juggles. Half the population. Come on. Yeah, I do. Okay, where is it? You think. Well, it's... Oh, oh, China. That's right. The Chinese have been juggling for thousands of years. It's amazing how they use those props. You know, the Chinese have never been surpassed when it comes to group juggling. What are those? Giant yo-yos? Those are diablos. It's an ancient Chinese prop. It's really amazing how they look at those plates. that without breaking them. Ah, oh, look. This juggler is an antipodist. An antipodist? Yeah, that means she only juggles with her feet. They're really great, but I'm not you're not talking about China. You're not talking about China? Nope. A place where half the population juggles, you're not talking about China? <laughs> what are you talking about? Tonga. Tonga? Tonga. Tonga is the last remaining island kingdom in the South Pacific. This tiny island has more jugglers <laughs> per square mile than anywhere else on Earth. Not only that, all the jugglers are women. hundreds of years ago as a game played by the daughters of nobility. The girls would juggle around a large ceremonial bowl chanting the names of eligible bachelors. The belief was the girl who juggled the longest had the best chance of marrying one of those noblemen. This elementary school teacher is said to be a direct descendant of the very first Tongan juggler. The Tongans use a technique called showering. One hand always throws, the other hand always catches. It's a very difficult way to juggle lots of objects. In fact, showering seven objects 
is a record unsurpassed in the entire world. This sudden wave of excitement is due to a traveling American juggler who has just arrived at the school. The children are surprised to find that the juggler is a man, and they're really amazed by the objects he's juggling. Some of the props create more than just interest, but the headmaster steps in to relieve some of their concern. To honor their guests, the Tongans hold a big juggling festival. Girls of all ages are included. And the rules are simple. If you miss, you sit down. The last one still juggling is the winner. The older girls juggle four, five, and even six tui tui nuts. Tonga and adults rarely juggle, but these school teachers show that they haven't lost their touch. And here, even the headmaster tries to get into the act. For a male Tongan, he sure wanted to get involved with the juggling. And he did. Tonga isn't the only place with a tradition of juggling. Here in San Francisco, there is a more recent tradition established by street performers. Renowned for its freedom and alternative lifestyles, this city has a creative atmosphere that inspires the unusual. These two unlikely commuters are actually on their way to work. They are the Fly-By-Night Comedy Review, one of San Francisco's many street juggling acts. Street performing has become so popular in this city that a festival is held every year in its honor. Surely, that's a nice name. All right, Karen. You move right over here. Francisco and several other cities have provided special outdoor stages for street performers. At my elbow. <laughs> you caught on. Okay, I've got it now. This enables the performers to concentrate on developing their acts rather than dealing with the hassles of the street. These torches are burning 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The boiling point of flesh. But do you think that scares us? 
is really what inspired us the most. San Francisco's first street jugglers, Ray Jason, had his share of problems with the authorities too. The charge was always the same, blocking a public street or sidewalk. Have you guys ever seen a weirder skill in your entire lives? I feel pretty strange, so let's go for ten in a row now. We're at six. Six. Jason's unique solution to the problems of street performing was to create his own portable stage, an antique flatbed truck. Well, the wonderful thing about my truck is it allows me a degree of freedom that most of the street performers don't have, because I don't have to fight for stage time as much as everyone else. And freedom is very important to a sidewalk entertainer, because it's one of the main reasons that you get into it in the first place. Now, don't throw it back! <laughs> Many street performers eventually go into the more standard forms of entertainment, like circuses or Las Vegas or Hollywood. I made a decision, oh, well, quite a few years ago that I wanted to really stay with the streets because I enjoyed it immensely. I enjoyed the naturalness. I enjoyed the freedom. I enjoyed the direct contact. Ten years after Jason's first street arrest, the mayor of San Francisco recognized his service to the city by proclaiming July 18, 1981, Ray Jason Day. The Pickle Family Circus has provided its members with a performing space far from the noise and distractions of the city streets. Many of the performers in the Pickle Family Circus got their beginnings or started off on the streets performing uh, as jugglers and clowns and acrobats and that sort of thing. Peggy and myself began as street performers, performing an act not too unlike the one that we're performing in the circus today. For me, juggling is a vehicle for performing. 
In order for me to perform well, I have to be able to juggle well. It wouldn't be enough for me to go out there and keep three balls going and give a monologue. I have to be able to do something that's worth the attention of my audience. It's not only have it be a vehicle for people to perform in, but we're also trying to put together a company. Anybody in the circus will tell you that there's an awful lot of work to be done on any show. This shared workload and shared joy within the performance can really be shown through the last act of our show, The Big Juggle. participate, whether they're a trapeze artist or a trampoline acrobat or a clown, we are all working on this one skill that can, in a lot of ways, best demonstrate group work. <laughs> Barrett Felker found the biggest stage of all when he signed as an opening act for the Harlem Globetrotters. Performing solo in an arena this size presents a number of special challenges. It's been a pretty major adjustment for me working with this show because there's no intimate audience contact. The closest people in the audience are 30 or 40 feet away and everything's just got to be a lot bigger. It's definitely a challenge to project your personality to people who are so far away. It doesn't matter how you get there if you don't know where you're going. Uh, okay, great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple things you ought to know about this. One is that we're improvising, like musicians jamming. None of us has any idea what any of the others are going to throw. For the flying Karamazov brothers, street performing has led to stardom on the Broadway stage. How do they do it? Their jazz routine brings a new level of improvisation, plus a little anarchy to group juggling. pattern of one guy passing the three guys and that's the tune we're playing within that we all have room to improvise oh should i go get that one the beat goes on and we can hear it even when all the clubs but one are on the floor The relationship between music and juggling, as the Karamazovs have always perceived it, is a very strong one. Uh, the, the way that juggling and music both happen as events versus time is, is a very clear relationship. Rhythm explores the untapped musical possibilities of juggling. One, two, three, four, five.
But there are other rewards for jugglers besides fame and applause. A practice session offers Kazaya Tannenbaum and Peter Davison the simple pleasures of teamwork and relaxed movement. to work with sports. Just from the very beginning, they have that problem of needing to first learn how to catch a ball before they can even begin to understand the, the intricacies of juggling. I see juggling as a beautiful visual art, an art of motion. yourself with dexterity in such a way that your personality comes out and you communicate certain things that aren't necessarily something that you could communicate with words. guarded secret. Modern day jugglers enjoy sharing their skills. It happens every weekend all around the country in public parks like this one. These weekly gatherings are really special. It gives a chance for the jugglers to socialize and to practice together. And these people who come here make a point of teaching their skill to anybody who wants to learn. It involves the yin and yang principles, the, uh, the creative and the mechanical, you use the left and the right side of your brain. And it's the, the beauty of the harmony of the whole thing that really makes it special to me. I think it's fun. Sometimes boring. You wouldn't have a room this far or so. I, I think what I was trying to say is that you, you can't really understand how to juggle until you, you try it yourself. Are you watching me? One, two, three. Right? One, two, get that third one up there. There you go. That's it.
share that special fascination with juggling. It's a kind of magic, that delicate balance between the force of gravity and the skill of the juggler. Even though juggling is a 4,000-year-old tradition, more people are juggling every day. That's true. And who knows? With so many people learning, it may not be long before half the people in this country learn how to juggle. Can you imagine if everybody juggled? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'd like right, that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you two showing us some. Hey, no. Yeah. 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 You just throw a in the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. Really You're handing them to me. I think I'm gonna do you do it. Well, um, okay. Oh, okay. Is this like juggling scarves at all? Same exactly. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Why don't we try it maybe uh, two or three at a time? Oh, teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Teamwork. I like teamwork. Thank you. 